The Two Oceans Aquarium in Cape Town is hard at work keeping some really amazing sea animals alive and healthy and they recently performed the, their very first stingray to stingray blood transfusion. I'm joined in studio by Nicholas Nickel from the aquarium to speak more about it. Thank you very much for joining me today. Good morning. Thanks. Now, whenever we hear about blood transfusions, you usually picture a human being propped up in a chair donating blood. But this is something entirely different. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, so um, we pretty much had, we realized one of our stingrays was uh, quite pale and sick. And how we noticed that was the animal actually stops eating. So we decided to take the animal out and actually have a look to see what was going on. And we found that it had a ectoparasite, which is a monogenian flatworm that you find in the gills. So what we also noticed was labored breathing. And so what we did was we, we took one of the um, healthy stingrays, which is of the same species, of course, and we drew blood from the caudal vein from that animal and actually transfused it into the, to the sick animal. Now, this has never been done before at the aquarium. Did you know that it was going to work for sure? Um, we, were, we weren't too sure, but we know it, had done, it, had, it has been done overseas before, which um, our resident uh, vet actually found out. And so it has been successful in other aquariums, but for Two Oceans Aquarium, it was a first. Yeah. How did you make sure that the one stingray's blood was compatible with the others? Or do stingrays not have, have that problem? Um, yeah, it's also not so well known, but um, what we actually did was we drew blood from both animals and what you actually do is you mix the blood, which you can pretty much do in humans as well, and actually see if the blood under the microscope, see if the blood clots or coagulates. If it doesn't, then you know you're actually okay and you can possibly get away with it. Yeah. And how is the stingray doing now? The stingray is doing absolutely fine. It's eating, it's healthy, it's not looking pale anymore. And yeah, it was, it was a great success. Now, the aquarium is also home to a critically endangered, and I want to get this right, hawksbill turtle. So yes. how did this hawksbill turtle end up at the aquarium? Um, they, it was actually a fisherman in Azerfontein that was actually on his way fishing off the rocks, um, and he actually stood on the turtle's flipper. Um, when they wash up, they look yeah, they, they're not in a good way. And he said it actually, if you see photos, it, it looked like a rock pretty much. So he actually stood on it and saw the turtle, contacted the NSRI in Azerfontein, and a whole lot of, a whole group of people actually came down because she's quite a big turtle. She's 70 kilograms. So they actually had to get her off the rocks into a vehicle and then they transported her down to Cape Town. Are hawks build turtles? Yes. Are they from South Africa? Do we find them on our shores? You do find them, but they are very, they're more equatorial. So on the equatorial belt where you find mainly the warmer water. So off the west coast, it's very rare to find them. And you know that if they're in the, in, off the west coast, they've been in cold water for a long time. And it's not good for a tropical turtle. Now, the Two Oceans Aquarium have a turtle rehabilitation program. Tell us a little bit more about that. So pretty much every year we get um, turtle strandings in and around Cape Town, which are mainly the, the loggerhead turtle, which is the Coretta Coretta, which is a different species. And they actually breed up in Natal, northern Natal, Cozy Bay. And you get the little hatchlings that wash down and actually get washed in as soon as we get either southeaster winds, which blow them off Musenberg side up the east coast, and then you get the northwester storms, which actually blow them in towards Camps Bay, Cape Point, that sort of side, and also up the west coast. So depending on the winds and this sort of time of the year, we get a whole range of turtles. We normally get between about 10 to 20 baby uh, loggerhead turtles a year that we rehabilitate and then send back up to Durban, back into the warmer waters. Now, how is the 70 kilogram turtle doing now? She's doing absolutely amazingly well. Um, she's eating on her own now. Um, at some point after about two weeks, we decided to tube feed her. And even at that stage, she was just from being in warm water again. She's actually rehydrated. We've been giving her fluids. And she was actually already so strong, we actually struggled to uh, tube feed her. Um, luckily, we only had to do that once. And she's actually starting to eat on her own. And yeah, she's doing swimmingly. <laughs> <laughs> Will she be returned to the ocean as soon as she's ready? Yes, she will. 
yeah, most certainly she'll be possibly flown up to the east coast to the warm waters again. Now, yeah. there's so many exciting projects happening at the aquarium. How do people get involved on either a volunteer basis or find out more about projects at the aquarium? Yeah, we've got a lot of programs running. Also, um, well, firstly on our website, you can see everything there. Um, you can either donate to a lot of the conservation causes that we that we do. And then we've also got a lot of um, volunteer programs and school group programs that we run throughout the year through our education department. Um, yeah, and those, and then we've also got, yeah, we've got uh, young biologist courses that we run for young children um, right through from grade six to grade 12. Um, and then we also have the adult bo um, volunteer program, which is a level one, level two, that allows people to then enter the aquarium and actually volunteer with us behind the scenes or with visitor services at the microscope or the touch pools.